So good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to uh, welcome you to this Minalogic Business Meeting Conference. Good design is good business uh, from Swan from IBM. Uh, pretty briefly, I, I will be your host and timekeeper. Uh, for any question that you might have, please write down the question with the chat. And at the end of this presentation, we will be um, reading those. So this is a 30 minutes presentation. The first 20 minutes will be dedicated to the presentation itself. And then we will dedicate 10 minutes for question and answers. So please, Swan, the mic is yours. Thank you. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for attending this session about design within IBM. Uh, so my name is Swan. I'm a senior managing consultant uh, for IBM based here in the beautiful city of Lyon. Uh, and I'm covering also all the French regions. I work primarily in digital transformation for education and industries. So um, I will try to make uh, things uh, quite quick so that we can have some uh, uh, questions and answers um, quite uh, thoroughly. Okay, so all of you know IBM, at least know the brand IBM, and uh, we have been what is called a well-established company uh, for the past hundred and almost most uh, ten years now. So we began uh, by manufacturing tabulating machines. We helped uh, democratize IT, and some of you might remember uh, some of our inventions, like uh, the floppy disk also called diskette, the Fortran and the SQL language, the barcode, uh, the mainframes, the personal computer. Uh, you know that we defeated Kasparov on chess with Deep Blue, and uh, we won Jeopardy also with Watson. Uh, we developed the computing, and the list can go on and on. Uh, we are more than uh, 360,000 IBMers in more than 140 countries. Uh, so you can see that big is really an adjective that applies to us. But like every uh, well-established company uh, since 1911, date of our creation, uh, we've had some ups and downs. And some of you may remember our first biggest challenge when after more than 60 years of leadership in our industry, we almost disappeared in 1993. So this crisis, as hard as impactful as it, ha as it has been for many IBMers, um, um, introduced a new culture components uh, for, uh, for us, uh, transformation and reinvention. Because in order to survive, uh, to keep on existing, we needed to transform ourselves, uh, not once, but continuously. So here are some important waves of our transformation uh, in the past 30 years. Move to service first. We progressively decrease the hardware part of our offer uh, to focus on software and services. And today, to give you an example, more than 60% of our revenues come from services. Openness, we begin with Linux as we dropped our own operating system. And we lately acquired Red Hat fantastic capability to manage multi-cloud environments. And most IBMers now have Mac as a computer. Design, that was the third way, and that's part of my story. And Cognitive is the latest one with the creation of the Watson brand for artificial intelligence. So back to design now. Uh, what pushed us to focus on design? Well. This guy, the inventor of the first technological device based on user experience. So 2007 has been a pivotal moment for the technology industry. And after him, many others came successfully on the market with one common approach, user-centric design platforms. So um, let's pause for a moment. What is design? According to Doug Powell, our distinguished designer, um, design is the discipline and craft of envisioning and creating great human experiences. Uh, and an experience can be digital, uh, but it can be also a place, a product, 
something that leaves you with a well-being souvenir. And design has been existing far before Steve Jobs. We know that designers have specific skills uh, to create those human experiences. And this is what leads us to design thinking. So according again to Duke Powell, design thinking is a collaborative and inclusive way to cross disciplinary teams uh, to address complex problems with a human focus. And all the words are important in this definition. So uh, back in uh, 2012, uh, five years after the first iPhone one was released, our new CEO, uh, Ginny Rometty, in one of our inspirational speech said, there's one key to our future growth, the client experience. So you can imagine this old company uh, focus on, on technology that we were at that time. This old company was going to focus on human first. This was kind of a revolution for us. And sometimes our memory can be short because back in the 70s then, a former and iconic CEO, Thomas Watson Jr. used to say, good design is good business. And he proved it by hiring the most eminent designers of that period, Elliot Noyes, for example, as our chief designer, Charles and Ray Ames. Uh, if you have, uh, uh, if you have, uh, if you remember the first picture of my presentation, the chairs are from Charles and Ray Ames and Eero Sarinen and many others. But when all these people left the company, we forgot about design. So um, for Ginny, it was very important uh, to focus on user experience, but how can we reintroduce design for several hundred and thousands of employees, tens of lines of business all over the world? So the leading design teams define three pillars, people, places, and practices. So people, what did we do? We hired more than 2000 designers worldwide. Some of them, their experience, but most of them uh, freshly graduated from uh, college. We created some specific places, what we call a studio. We have now 42 studios around the world. A studio is the place to gather cross-disciplinary teams to foster graduation. And practices. So we could have uh, taken uh, existing design thinking methods as we are not the inventor of the design thinking, but we needed something uh, that could be spread at scale, which could take into account our organization, our process, our DNA. And this is why we developed the IBM design thinking framework symbolized by the loop. So this framework has its own design language, its own design artifacts and practices, and some design research. And by the way, if you're interested in the IBM design thinking framework, it's entirely free uh, and open to anyone outside IBM. Then, what did we do? We organized massive training of designers because some of them were just graduated from college, as I just said, but more importantly, uh, for all the non-designers of the company, the consultants, the IT specialists, the developers, architects, project managers, sellers, etc. We put in place a certification program and freely any IBMer can now uh, be trained and certified on IBM design thinking. And so far, we have more than uh, 65,000 design thinkers at different levels within uh, our structure. Um, we also develop an end-to-end -end approach uh, with other methodologies, such as Agile and DevOps, uh, from strategic setup to deployment at scale. And um, because the thing is, it's great to have and to design user experiences, but that's, the, that's only the beginning. It's another challenge to deploy them on the market. But then what? The problem is that, as Phil Gilbert, our general manager of design, used to say, 
The business doesn't care about design thinking or any concept. The business only cares about market outcomes. So in 2018, uh, we commissioned a study to Forrester Consulting on the total economic impact of IBM design thinking practice. And although we commissioned it, uh, Forrester was independent and had editorial control over the results. Forrester found that um, this approach accelerates project uh, and reduces risk uh, and increase, increases portfolio profitability. Uh, they found also that uh, it fasters time to market by two. It reduces design times by 75% and it reduces development time by 33%. Those are the business outcome that Phil Gilbert was talking about. So uh, what do we use design thinking for? Well, we use it for our own purpose, but we use also uh, for our client, of course. Uh, and we, for our own purpose, we are progressively redesigning all of our software and we uh, try to, make, to do the same with our service. Uh, for a client, I took two types of examples to illustrate how we use design thinking. So, first example is clients for whom we designed one innovative and disruptive user experience. I took two of them uh, as examples. So, in the USA, for example, we reinvented the fan experience for the Mercedes Stadium uh, of Atlanta. So we designed an app, but it is not only to buy a ticket uh, to see a football game, uh, but it is also to have an immersive experience before, during, and after the game and stay connected with friends and family. Uh, and this project also embedded some IoT and data analytics capabilities. The second, was, uh, second example is an interesting one. Uh, it was for Knorr, the seasoning cubes uh, uh, for food, uh, who wanted to attract millennials. Uh, after some design research, we found that most million, for most millennials, food is part of the seduction process. Uh, so we proposed to the client to design a taste matching app instead of having a love matching app, we have a taste matching app. And you can see the result by Googling love at first sight. Uh, and you will see that, for example, the video, the short video that we made hit 60 million views on YouTube, for example. And this project also embedded some cognitive capabilities to do that. Uh, we also help other clients to integrate design at scale in their organization. And instead of training them and working for them, what we do is we co-design great user experience with them and we transfer progressively all our know-how to their teams so they can continue without us. So we are currently doing it for a French insurance company to help them design and deploy a new platform for people who accompany a parent who needs medical care. Uh, and we've also done it with Stago, which is a, a pharmaceutical uh, French company, uh, to design at scale new services for the clients, uh, the lab technicians. And all this is done through what we call the digital factory, where we also embark uh, some agile and mobile capabilities. So um, to conclude uh, about uh, what we could recommend about the do's and don'ts uh, on, on the design thinking, uh, I would say don't consider that design is only cosmetics. Uh, all the speakers today, and I've heard some of them and myself have demonstrated that uh, there is a business value behind design. Uh, don't let, uh, design only to designers, uh, because um, the, the more you have cross-disciplinary teams with you, uh, the more value and accuracy you will bring 
to your final client. Don't imagine that uh, employees will embrace design immediately. You will need some change management, some training, and as uh, I told you, um, it took us five years to have 65,000 design thinkers within the company. Don't believe that you know better your clients' needs than themselves. Ask them directly. You will not lose face, but you will gain trust. Um, don't think that design thinking doesn't need training. No one is natively a design thinker, a good design thinker, and uh, training will help you be more efficient and impactful. So what we recommend you to do is to build cross-disciplinary teams to unleash creativity. Clients, sales and marketing teams, business experts, IT teams, procurement, designers, all these people all together will, make, will bring much value to the final uh, business outcome. Embark all your organization in this shift of culture because design thinking is a new way of working. It's a new mindset and you need to do this change from top to bottom, from the top executive leadership management to the practitioner. Uh, try to choose one common framework and tools for everyone. Don't let uh, everyone decide individually what they want to use because you need to speak the same language. Uh, favor wild ducks, uh, what we call wild ducks within IBM, because their craziness will be beneficial to think out of the box and foster innovation. And last, I would say, um, make your own experience with experienced people first. Um, we are here and there are other agencies also who are very skilled in design thinking uh, and it's good to start uh, with them. Uh, use your own experience, uh, use our experience and their experience and then make your own. And um, I thank you very much for your attention and if you have any questions, I'm open to it. Thank you, Swan, for this presentation. Um, as I was saying earlier, if you have any question, please write it down in the chat since you won't have the chance to, to speak it out. So all questions are warmly welcome. Hi, Swan. It's uh, David from uh, Minalogic. I don't know if you uh, can hear me. I can hear you, David. Swan, can you hear David? No, I, I heard it, but very far away. Okay. I tried to be uh, closer to my uh, computer. Do can you, you hear me? Now? Please, David, or maybe write in, in, the, in the chat. I can see the chat, but I don't see any questions so far. Me neither. I, I think they're writing. <laughs> okay. So in Lyon, um, for um, the studio we have now is is mainly in uh, in Paris, but what we're trying to do is to open one in Lyon uh, to cover the the southeast uh, region of France. Um, so usually what we do is that we also have some partnership. Uh, for example, we we trying to work a lot with uh, EM Lyon, uh, which was one of our clients for many years. Uh, and we use the facility to do that.
That answers your question, David. Oh, okay. How do we manage this new orientation towards the clients? It's very new for our client because um, our client used to have some engineers in front of them and not having some designers and uh, uh, business consultants. So it's quite new for our client. It's, it's really something, it's a shift of mindset for them too. And um, it took us some time. I still remember um, this uh, big industrial aeronautic client telling me, well, Swan, I don't understand what, why do you need us to do a design thinking workshop to increase our sales of training? And, and um, to be very honest, it took us uh, almost three months to convince them. But after that, they were totally convinced. And now they embedded the design thinking approach completely in their every everyday business. Do you think we may change people inside company to move to design thinking? Of course, this is what we did. We uh, hired some new people, you know, uh, Phil Gilbert, uh, Doug Power. Those are the great leadership design team that uh, Jenny hired uh, for us uh, five years ago. Before that, uh, designers were just, you know, to make things beautiful. It wasn't uh, meant to be designed as the English word design, like conceived, you know, uh, from scratch uh, for the end user. So yes, for me, uh, it's important to uh, bring some new blood within the company with this new culture and this new shift. And for us, it was, uh, uh, quite um, uh, important as, for example, when you see the pyramid of age within IBM, we used to have, uh, I would say, a high average, uh, I would say like uh, 50 in terms of age uh, of average. Now it lowers down and we have a lot of young people, you know, coming uh, uh, to our team, bringing this new blood, this new way of uh, seeing digital different than what we used to do. Ah, uh, do we fire? No, <laughs> we don't fire anyone in, within IBM. No, no, no. Um, well, we, we had a lot of what we call, you know, the volunteer departure. It means that uh, people who don't want to stay, who don't feel like staying with us because we change all the time. It could be very tiring for people, you know, to change all the time. and. Um, for many years, the company didn't change at all for many, many, many years. And now every six months, we have a shift of something, of culture, of product. Uh, we are trained all the time and it's very tiring for some people. So people who don't feel like it or uh, who are not comfortable with this new approach, well, they're free to leave. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> well, if there is no more question, oh, oh, there is one. Another. White King of collaboration. Oh, what kind? Oh, sorry. What kind of collaboration are you looking for? Uh, you mean within our company, outside the company? Um, outside the company. Um, that's uh, just before I was with another, um, I was in a business meeting with, uh, with a startup and they're saying, well, do you IBM um, collaborate with startups, for example, um, who are in AI, although you have your own AI solution? And I said, yes. Uh, we are, as, as I said, we are very open. So IBM services is very agnostic. We take the better solution where it is. If it's inside the company, that's a good point. If it's outside the company, we are going to look for it. So I can take some uh, technologies that are not IBM property or IBM owned uh, because they are the best for my clients. And nobody is going to tell me anything about that. Um, do you train your clients too? Yes, of course. We train our clients 
and we give them also all the materials they need to go on without us. And that's very important. The design thinking framework is entirely free. Uh, if you Google it, you will find all the training entirely free. Um, you can be certified freely also. Um, the only thing we want is that we want people to begin thinking uh, on, on the user-centric approach, uh, whatever the methodology they use. What we are convinced of is that our methodology brings much value to our clients. So this is why we opened it. So who is in charge of the alignment of the market demand and the design options of the market price? Uh, what do you mean by that? So, okay, usually people don't come to us and, and say, uh, people don't come to IBM saying, we need you to design something. This is not how it happens. People come to IBM because they have some issues and they want some business outcomes. Uh, these designers can be completely an open loop. Yes, so this is why I talked about cross-disciplinary uh, cross teams because we don't let designers do the things on their own. When we do a, um, a design thinking workshop or any workshop, I would say, we use uh, multidisciplinary teams and it is key for us to have uh, people who foster ideation and designers are part of it, but we have also some very, some very realist people, architects, developers, and they're going to tell us, well, this is crazy, but this is not possible to do it. Or this is completely crazy, but it's feasible. And this is what uh, leads us, this is what I talked about when I said uh, that we were trying to do something end to end and to combine dif different methodologies to come to a business outcome because design thinking uh, alone uh, is not enough uh, to bring some business value. If you put some agile methods, some DevOps methods, then you can bring the idea to the market. So designers for us are never alone, never. Does it even answer to the question? Well, I believe well, we can close this session. Um, thank you very much, Swan. Oh, we're grateful for your presentation. Um, and I wish you all uh, a nice day, a nice MBM meetings. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye.